Welcome back to the Project Gaming channel. I'm new to the family, I'm Mike, and today we're gonna review the Valkyrie V360 Lite as well as the Valkyrie B12. Before we begin, please like, subscribe, and comment for more Project Gaming content. Thanks Mike for the intro. intro. So we're gonna be unboxing the V360 Lite from Valkyrie as well as these case fans. So they have the, the regular case fans as well as the reverse. So we're gonna be using this in the John's Bow D400. And let's get to it. All right, so here we have it, the box. It actually has a built-in string, so if you want to carry it around, that's handy. So let's get to unboxing this. Here's the accessory kit. So this is the Valkyrie B12 high static pressure cooling fans, so this is case fans. So they have two versions, they have the reverse as well as the regular. And then these are some of the features that they have right here. All right, let's open it up. Actually, let's look at the back as well. There you go. This isn't our first experience with the Valkyrie brand. We built a computer two years ago with the Valkyrie GL360. It's still going strong. So here we are with the new Valkyrie's offering, the V360 Lite AIO CPU liquid cooler. They also have a 240 version as well for those people building in smaller cases. They've got you covered. They have the accompanying V12 ARGB, 120 millimeters in standard and reverse for case fans so you can get a uniform look. So. First thing, let's take a look at the pump. It's got a really unique look. So I haven't taken off the pull tab yet. So this isn't, so there's still some fingerprints on it. So that's fine. I think this design will age quite well, especially for those of you that hold on to your PCs longer. The LCD game is changing quickly. So I wouldn't be surprised if they start incorporating OLED into AIO pumps, which would make the, the LCDs quite dated. So since there's no LCD on this, this should age quite well. The pump can be broken down into three pieces. So you got the top layer right here, it's all magnetic. And you have this piece right here. The reason they allow you to take this off so you have better access to these two screws right here. So 
So for the top piece, you can actually put it in any orientation, depending on how you set up your AIO. So you have this way, this way, this way, this way, and back to the original spot. And I can foresee them having different covers in the future. So if you get bored of this one, you can get another one to refresh up the look without getting a whole new AIO. I've talked to them already. They have no plans for this, but the possibility is there. And on the back, they have their own pace already pre-applied and the pump itself can spin at a dizzying 2800 RPMs. The dimension of this pump is 86 mm, 74 mm by 68.5 mm. The tube length of this is 450 millimeters. It's made from CIRR and EPDM, topped off with a corrugated material braided sleeve. Let's look at the radiator. It's made from aluminum. The dimensions are 379 millimeters by 120 millimeters by 27 millimeters. The fans max out at 2150 RPM, has an airflow of 81.68 CFM, has a static pressure of 40 millimeters of water column. The fans can spin up to 30.5 decibels. All the RGB connectors are 3-pin ARGB. Pump and fan power connector is 4-pin PWN connectors. Let's look at the compatibility. It supports AM5, AM4. On the Intel side, it covers 1851, 1700, 1200, 1151. It has a CPU TDP of 300 watts. So TDP is thermal design power. For reference, one of the best CPU on the markets right now is the AMD Ryzen 9. 9950X3D. On default, it only needs 170 watts. All this and it comes with a five-year warranty, which is on the higher end of the in industry norms. Safe to say they have confidence in their build quality. I usually don't point out stuff on the instruction manual, but their attention to detail and making sure you don't mess up has to be commended. A lot of people mix up the connector for the pump and the radiator. They got you covered. Here, they are protecting you from yourself by telling you the radio reservoir needs to be higher than the pump. This helps with the longevity of your AIO. All right, that's the first look at the Valkyrie 360 Lite. We're gonna be using it in our next build, but just looking at the specs and the build quality of the product, we have no doubt it's gonna perform quite well. In terms of software to control the RGB, Valkyrie did say to use the motherboard software to do so. And that's it for this one. We'll see you guys in the next one.